Stop me if you've heard this one before. Don't buy a Chinese car. They're made of tinfoil. You'll die if you hit a shopping cart. For years, that was the reputation. And honestly, 20 years ago, it was true. But here is the controversy. The mainstream media wants you to focus on the spyware. They want you to worry if the car is sending your GPS location to a server in Beijing. I don't care if the car knows I went to McDonald's twice today. I want to know if the A-pillar will collapse into my skull if I hit a concrete wall at 64 kilometers per hour. Today, we are not just busting a myth. We are blowing it out of the water. We have gathered the crash test data, the body structure schematics, and the raw destruction footage of the top-selling Chinese SUVs that are terrifying legacy automakers right now. Spoiler alert, one of these cars uses steel so strong it's usually reserved for nuclear submarines. Another one literally jumps into the air to save your life before a crash. Buckle up, let's hit the wall. First up, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Literally, the Hongqi EHS-9. Hongqi isn't just a car brand, it's the red flag. This is what diplomats drive. This is the Rolls Royce of China. And when you're charging premium prices, you can't offer budget safety. There's a rumor that because this car is so heavy, it just crushes everything else, but isn't safe for the people inside. Well, the Euro NCAP, the strictest crash testers in Europe, decided to smash one into a wall to find out. The result, a solid five-star safety rating. But look at the details. This thing scored a massive 87% in child occupant protection. Why? Because it's a tank. The secret here is the cage. Hongqi uses a mix of thermoformed steel and high-strength aluminum alloys. In the frontal offset test, the passenger compartment didn't just survive, it remained stable. The A-pillars, they barely flinched. And for those of you worried about the battery, because, you know, EVs catch fire, in the side pole impact, which is basically wrapping the car around a tree, the battery pack integrity remained 100% intact. No leaks, no fires. It's not just a luxury barge, it's a bunker. Okay, so the Hongqi protects you with pure mass. But our next contender, the Avatar 11, wants to protect you with something else. Math. You can't crash if you never hit the obstacle. The Avatar 11 is packed with three LiDAR sensors, six millimeter radars, and 12 ultrasonic radars. It sees things before you do. But let's say the worst happens. Let's say you do hit something. The Avatar 11 scored a five-star CN cap rating. But here is the nerd stuff I love. The chassis is a hybrid steel aluminum structure. They used a seven series aviation grade aluminum alloy for the front bumper beam. Why does that matter? Because aluminum absorbs energy better than steel. It crumples so you don't have to. In the frontal crash test, the energy absorption ratio was off the charts, meaning the force stops at the hood and the cabin remains a safe zone. Plus, because Huawei is involved, the active safety, the automatic emergency braking is terrifyingly good. It can stop for a pedestrian at night, in the rain, at 80 kilometers per hour. That is not just safety, that is a superpower. Now moving on to the Lincoln Co. 08. I know what you're thinking, is this just another Geely? Yes, but do you know who else is owned by Geely? Volvo. The Lincoln Co. 08 sits on the CMA Evo architecture. This is basically Swedish safety engineering on a Chinese budget. We looked at the body in white structure. They're using hot formed boron steel in the A pillars, B pillars, and the door reinforcement beams. If you don't know metallurgy, boron steel is the stuff they use to make saws and tools. It is incredibly hard to bend. In the side impact tests, this material choice shines. The B pillar, the post next to your head, refused to snap. It transferred the load down into the chassis rails. And here's a detail most reviewers miss, whiplash protection. Because of the Volvo heritage, the seat structure in the 08 is designed to pivot slightly in a rear end collision, saving your neck. It's the invisible engineering that saves you from a lifetime of back pain. Next up, we have the daddy of them all. This car is marketed as the ultimate family hauler. But when you have your kids in the back, luxury doesn't matter if the car folds like an or dummy crane. Lee Auto calls their safety architecture the fortress body. Is it marketing fluff? Well, let's look at the steel. The L9 uses 2000 megapascals high strength steel in the A pillars. For context, a submarine hull is usually around 1000 megapascals. The steel in this pillar is twice as strong as a submarine. 
Watch this CN cap footage. When the car hits the barrier at 64 kmph, look at the A pillar. It is straight as an arrow. The door opens normally after the crash. That is the gold standard. If the door is jammed, you can't get your kids out. In the L9, the door handles pop out automatically and the door swings open. They also created a double side beam structure at the bottom. This is to protect the battery and the passengers from a T-bone crash. It's redundant engineering. If the first beam fails, the second one holds. And now, the one you've been commenting about non-stop. For a while, we thought Zekra stopped at the 7X, but they just dropped the Zeker 9X. This is their new flagship, and it's not just an EV, it's Zeker's first super hybrid. But I don't care about the hybrid engine today. I care that this thing is built like a bank vault. This car introduces something Zeker calls the Han Safety Armor. They're using a 2000 megapascals rear body structure. Most cars use that strong steel only in the front pillars. Zeker put it in the back too, to protect the third row passengers. If you get rear-ended by a semi-truck, the people in the back seats are sitting inside a hardened steel cage. But here's the feature that blew my mind. It's called intelligent active defense. Imagine a truck is barreling towards your side door. You are about to get T-boned. In a normal car, you brace for impact. The Zeker 9X, it jumps. The millimeter radars detect the incoming crash. In milliseconds, the air suspension fires and lifts the entire body of the car up. Why? Because the door is weak. The bottom frame, the battery rail, is the strongest part of the car. By jumping up, the Zeker forces the other car to hit the solid steel frame instead of your rib cage. It literally body slams the impact. Zeker has been testing this platform with 105 km per hour crash tests, way faster than the standard 64 km per hour. They're preparing for highway speed accidents, not just city fender benders. So, are Chinese SUVs safe? If you were looking at these top tier models, Hongqi, Avatar, Lincoln Co., Li Auto, and the new Zeker 9X, the answer is a hard yes. The Tin Can era is dead. They are using submarine grade steel, active defense systems, and Huawei AI to stop the crash before it happens. Legacy automakers should be terrified, not because these cars are cheaper, but because in many cases, they are now safer. But safety is only part of the story. The Zeker 9X is a hybrid, while the others are pure EVs. That changes the reliability game. I'm working on a video comparing the real-world range of the Zeker 9X versus the Lee Auto L9 in freezing temperatures. If you want to see who dies first in the cold, smash that like button. Let me know in the comments. Would you trust the jumping safety tech of the Zeker 9X, or is it just one more thing to break? This is Wheel Factor. Drive safe, and if you can't drive safe, drive something that jumps out of the way of the crash for you. See you in the next one.